Hi. Okay, you can hear me, right? Okay. Yeah, my name's Deepin. Um, I'm mostly a Python programmer, and I have about a week of experience with Puppeteer. So obviously, I'm the most qualified person to give this talk. Uh, let me get this going. Um, who has heard of Puppeteer? Who who knows what Puppeteer is? Ah, excellent. Okay, so most people don't. That makes it. Who's heard of Selenium? Oh, more people. Okay. Okay. Um. Yeah, okay, so let me get started. Uh, general introduction to Puppeteer. Puppeteer is uh, is Google's web driver. Um, a web driver is basically how you interact with a browser programmatically. So, you know, you go to websites and you click around, but you don't want to click around, you want your program to click around for you. You use a web driver, and um, you don't have to look at the code. The code, there's nothing going on there. Just listen to me first. Uh, yeah. So um, basically, uh, as I mentioned, I'm mostly a Python programmer. And uh, in Python land, there's this thing called Selenium, which is, I think, one of the most popular web drivers around. And it's been, I think, the most dominant web driver for the last couple of years. Um, yeah, and um, I've used it before. It is very troublesome to set up. Um, you have to install lots of things, and you have to link lots of things, and there's lots of things that always break when you try using it. And um, so I had a new project where I needed to do some web scraping and uh, I heard of this thing called Puppeteer, which is like supposed to be magical and people are raving about it online. So I wanted to try it out. Uh, let me give you a general introduction to what it does, right? So um, yeah, so um, why you'd want to use Puppeteer before that? So Selenium is kind of like a cross browser solution. If you need to test, for example, if you're doing unit testing in the browser and you need to test across, across Firefox and as well as Chrome and all the other browsers, then Selenium is the right um, library for you, it's the right solution for you. Uh, Puppeteer is Google's library. It only works with Chrome or Chromium, either one. Um, it can do most of the things that Selenium can do. Um, it's actually quite powerful. I'll cover some of the things it can do in a bit. Um, but yeah, um, it's not quite the right solution for you if you're looking for a cross-browser solution, All right? Um, yeah, and the reason mostly I went with Puppeteer is it's really simple to set up. It's literally just npm install Puppeteer. Uh, it comes with its own bundled Chromium, so you don't have to like have Chrome installed or you don't, you don't need to link any libraries. Like every, when you just do npm install, it comes with a little bundled Chromium. Um, Chromium is the open source version of Chrome, All right? Yep, and yeah. Okay, and let me show you what I've been doing. So basically for a project at work, I need, I'm need i exploring some commodities data, so I need to scrape uh, commodities news sites. So I'm, I'm scraping like fairly large volumes of uh, data, and I've been trying to use Puppeteer. Um, it works fairly well. Let me go through bits of code. Um, I, I can, give me a second. Okay, so before going, uh, yeah, so my, my rough project structure is basically the idea was um, for every site I need to scrape, I'll write this little site config thing, which is, um, which is basically what changes between the different sites. Uh, but the general code um, is, is actually really simple. Um, let me go through that. Um, yeah, so for example, um, basically what I'm doing is I'm going through, I'm going to all the different sites. I am getting the, the title, who the author is, wh when it was posted, what the t text of um, 
this H, uh, what the what the main body of this article is, and I'm saving it a database. Like 90% of my code is saving things to databases, or like there's only like a couple of lines of puppeteer, honestly. Uh, and let me show you uh, that bit. Um, so I start off with, um, yeah. So launch puppeteer. Launch puppeteer basically launches. A Chrome, a Chrome browser. You can launch it. Uh, if you notice, I have this headless false or true. Um, so headless. Um, so you can launch it in either headless. So headless mo mode means there's no GUI. There's no actual browser that pops up. Um, it just runs in the background. You never, you don't actually see it. But everything else should behave as per normal. Uh, if you run it in non-headless mode, uh, your actual Chrome browser will pop up, and it will. You can see the things it's doing. If you're just doing like um, testing, or you're just writing a script, and you're trying to figure out what you want it to do. Uh, it's useful to start with headless first, and then like once you are actually running your stuff, you can uh, move to headless. Yeah. So the code is literally um, launch puppeteer. Launch puppeteer gives you a browser instance. Um, you wait for a new page. You go to a new page. Um, for me, I'm looping over a whole bunch of pages. Uh, you go to a new page, and uh, let me show you the actual getting stuff out from page. So just a little bit Chrome to evaluate. Um, this bit. Uh, took me a while to get. Took me a while to understand. Uh, so there's two kind of things going on. There is the uh, process that's running Puppeteer, and separately there is a sandboxed um, thing that's running inside your Chrome um, browser. So everything inside Evaluate actually runs in. It's the equivalent of opening up your console and typing some code there. So you can do things like document query selector or whatever standard. Um, like JavaScript stuff, you know how to interact with a website. You can put inside your evaluate block, and basically that's what's running in the context of the um, of the browser. So you don't actually need to learn anything new if you if you know how to select a title. Like if you know how to open the console and select the title, uh, then you can use Puppeteer because it's the same thing. It's literally the running just um, all this Chrome to evaluate block is doing is it's running uh, that bit of code in the context of the browser and then returning a response. Um, one issue I had was you can actually pass in um, something from outside into into the context of the browser, but it serializes that object. So, like if you try to pass in something with like functions, the functions just kind of disappear. It doesn't serialize properly, so that's an issue. Um, that's so. Um, was that clear? Do you do you get what I mean? Like so, um, if you notice, evaluate. I'm passing in this selector. Uh, sele um, selector is something I'm trying to pass in from outside into the context of the browser. But if that object that I'm passing in has any functions, it doesn't get serialized, it just disappears and you get like undefined inside. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so it basically, in summary, if you're trying to do like some kind of browser automation, PubG is really easy to use. The, I didn't find the documentation that easy to follow. I think they need to do, do a bit of work on um, the documentation still. Um, other than that, it's been quite good. I still can't get around captures, but I can't get around captures with anything, so that doesn't help. Um, the other issues I faced are headless and non-headless should give you the same results all the time, but I sometimes get different results, and I don't know why. So if anyone knows why, that would be great. Um, and yeah, so I'm only using it for data scraping, but you can use it like we can use it with like. Mocha.js for like unit testing or whatever. There's other things things you can use, and you can use it for things like filling up forms. Like you, it gives you all the normal things you can do in browser. Like you can type, you can select uh, input, and then you can like page dot type, or you can page dot click, or you can um, like focus events, or you can uh, listen to events. Like you can wait for something to happen and you can act on it. So it's a fairly full featured um, browser automation tool. It also lets you do things like take screenshots and create PDFs out of entire pages. So like if you want to do like um, testing, like you've made a change, is the output of my website the same as before? That kind of thing, you can do that as well. Uh, yeah, any questions so far? What's up? Uh, I haven't yet because I'm... Oh, sorry. Um, the question was, do you get rate limited or blocked? Um, I haven't as of yet. Um, the, the, the sites that use um, like captures and stuff, I just get stuck right at the beginning. But the sites that don't implement it usually like if they find you just like um, I'm not I'm probably doing at most like a request a second, so it's not like huge volume. Yeah. What's up? Wait. 
I tried that, but um, generally, if I hit a capture and I try to manually fill it up, I still can't get through. I just get stuck in the capture loop for forever for some reason. Um, also, I have a lot of colleagues who are also scraping at the same time. So I think it just detects that my entire network has a lot of shit going on. <laughs> and like, I'm getting like generally, like even if I'm like just in a browser and going somewhere, sometimes it gives me captures when I no normally wouldn't be getting those. Yes, Tim. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So I should, instead of like opening a brand new Chromium browser, I should like use an existing Chrome browser. Okay, yeah, I'll try that, yeah. No, I, I have no idea. Like, no one said anything, so I haven't, I haven't, <laughs> I haven't done anything. <laughs> um, but I mean, there was this whole court case about like, if if data is publicly available, it should be fine to scrape, right? Like, there was this thing that happened with, uh, and then I'm not sure. Yeah, uh, well out of my area of expertise. Yeah. A what? Oh no, I have not tried that. Um, that will no. Yeah, anyone have any experience with? But uh, uh, there's nothing much to say about. Uh, we're using JS mostly, pure JS, as few libraries as we can. Uh, we use a service who provides us. Uh, I I don't remember because we we tested a lot of different ones. We. Oh no! Wait, it's not. No. So, sorry. On that on that topic, like while I was looking this up, I found this API which um, is for solving captures. It's literally real people solving captures for you. On or, or like not, we we use that. Yeah. Like on like in real time. Like they have like I'm not sure how many people they have, but they they, they give you like they can solve your capture within a certain amount of time. <laughs> and they have like a, a a page with photos of all their workers and like and like and like how these people are from third world countries and make about 200 USD a a, a, a a week, which is like more than, or a month, which is more than, like they would usually make something like that. But I was like, well, okay, that's dodgy. But I'm not sure. But okay, so use that if you if you need a capture solving service. I, I'll find it for you. I'm not sure. So since we've gone into captures, but what happens when you get those like I'm not a robot prompts from Google? Like, how would um, that service solve it? So I think you, that's a good question. Like it, it, hmm. it might be that you need some kind of virtual like Chrome browser that you both share and they interact with it part of the time. Like instead of having a browser on your own machine, could you open it on like a, like a remote desktop somewhere, something like that? I'm not really sure how that would work. That's a good question. I don't know, like my impression of the, I'm not a robot captures, I may be wrong, is that maybe they look at your mouse movement and kind of see that your mouse movement is pretty slow and um, inaccurate and they decide you're a human. So um, I briefly looked this up and it seems to be a lot more than that. Like, especially for things like Chrome, like they, they do even seem to look at your like browsing history and what you've been doing before. Like if you spend the last three hours browsing memes, they're like, this, this is a person, just let him through. But if... Yeah, that kind of thing also seems to be the case. It's not just mouse movement. There seem to be a lot of things. I've encountered this style of capture mostly on Chinese websites where it's a slider. Is, are those captures automat automatically solvable? Sorry? So um, sometimes it's like an image, but they do it as a jigsaw puzzle piece, and then you have to slide the piece from left to the the empty slot, and that's like so. There's a a simpler version is just dragging the slider 
from left to right completely. That's the simpler version. I've seen the jigsaw puzzle version. But it only comes out on Chinese websites. I think Lazada uses that as well, though. Lazada Singapore. I've seen it on Lazada Singapore. Like, yeah, I get that, it quite that often. Type of, yeah. That type of capture, is it... Can you can we solve it automatically? Or it, it really is requires human intervention? And anybody? I, I have no experience with that. I've only been using Google's recapture. Yeah, so if it's like the jigsaw puzzle style where the distance is not fixed, then how, huh? But you have to stop at the spot, wall. Ah, ah, ah. So, it, can you imagine it's like an image, then there's a hole in the middle, but the hole is not at the same place all the time. Then to drag the piece until you fit the hole. So basically what you must so basically what you must do is you basically build another human that has the AI to go and do all these things. Yeah. Or maybe it's just an Any other questions? I had some questions. I had four questions. <laughs> what, what, what were they? <laughs> Not that I remember. Uh, so like I saw in the code you have chrome.evaluate and then you pass in a function with a selector argument, but I didn't understand how Oh. Okay, okay, okay. So you pass in the argument at the end. Okay. For regular um, Selenium, it's really easy to set up. Like, like I Selenium is really troublesome. No. Okay, I haven't used it. In like, <laughs> okay, I haven't used it in about three years. But the last time I used Selenium, like, it was like it was it. I never. It was. It wasn't as easy as just installing it. That you had to install the the driver and then you had to link them and then. I'm not sure whether maybe it's gotten a lot easier now. I haven't touched it in. Yeah, in like a while. I, I yeah. actually most recently set up Selenium on my new computer, and then especially if you only need Chrome, uh, you just need to brew install Chrome driver, and then if you use it with Python, it just hooks up like like that. That's it, and then you just need to pip install whatever is necessary. Selenium, yeah. So it, it's gotten better, I assume. <laughs> it's been yeah. a while. Yeah. yeah. So I, I I went down this route because I mean I had just been hearing a lot about um, how good it is. And I wanted to try it out, and it's it's, it's okay. It's pretty good. Yeah. Cool. <laughs>